Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It is Class of Friday again during Cobra Convergence, and this time we are looking at the head snake himself, Cobra Commander, from the G.I. Joe Classified series of 6-inch scale action figures. As you can see, we have two action figures here. We are going to look at the standard release Cobra Commander and the so-called Regal Cobra Commander. Both of these figures have the same packaging and the same numbering. The difference is the coloring of the figure and and the accessories. The standard release Cobra Commander was widely available. The Regal Cobra Commander was accidentally teased by a phone app that was spelled without any vowels. I still don't know what the app is for and I don't care. Let's look at that packaging. We have the window pane showing the figure and the accessories. We have the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo. This is Cobra Commander. We have some box art here on the front and the side and I do like this art style. It's very sharp and looks great. This is number six in the classified series. On the back of the box we have some generic poster artwork and on the other side we have these symbols which represent his specialty. This is the symbol for the Cobra Olympics. These are popsicles with the sticks broken off. This means the thoughts going on in his mind are just shocking and this means he always really wanted to be a puppeteer. He tried out for Jim Henson Studios but he was rejected and that's why he's so angry now and wants to take over the world. Let's take both the standard release Cobra Commander and the Regal Cobra Commander out of the packaging and take a look at them. Here we have Cobra Commander and Regal Cobra Commander out of the packaging. They both look really good. I will point out we did get a third Cobra Commander, the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander, which is the same mold in a radically different deco. I've already reviewed the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander, so I won't go into too much depth now. Let's take a look at the standard issue Cobra Commander first. First, he has the darker blue, kind of like the vintage hooded Cobra Commander, but without the hood, he has the battle helmet. Let's look at his accessories. He has this strange pistol, which in my opinion from a distance looks like a fish. Maybe it's a magic gun. Where did he purchase that? The pistol has a lot of elaborate detail. It has this spike under the barrel and all this snake detail and a snake head for the handle. It really is hyper detailed and impressive. It has has a hammer like a percussion pistol. This looks like something that would be more ceremonial than actually used in combat. This is not by any stretch my favorite Cobra Commander accessory, but it's not bad. I'd still prefer the original Venom laser pistol. Speaking of ceremonial accessories, he has a Cobra head sword, and it does fit in the sheath on his belt, and it is removable. The sword has a gold Cobra head handle and a silver curved blade. Definitely not a combat weapon, but maybe something he uses to bestow knighthood on Cobra troops. The remaining accessories from the package are not really accessories at all. They are alternate hands. We have a right hand that is pointing and a left hand in a fist. We will change out the hands momentarily after we look at the figure. Cobra Commander has the standard articulation for a classified figure, which is pretty good. So he has a ball jointed head and a swivel neck, so he can move his head with a really great range of motion. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders that are pretty tight. They don't move too much. He can lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. It is hindered somewhat by this left shoulder piece. He has a twist at the bicep. He has double jointed elbows. He has a swivel at the wrist and hinges at the wrist. And yes, those alternate hands also have hinges. He has a hinge at the rib cage for an ab crunch. And on this example, it's really tight. He cannot crunch forward very far. He has some additional articulation at the waist. He has a ball and a twist that is somewhat hindered by this belt piece. He has a leg split that is again a bit hindered by this belt and tunic piece. He can move his leg forward and back a bit at the hip. He has a cut at the thigh for a swivel. He has double jointed knees. He has a cut at the boot for a swivel. He has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of standard issue Cobra Commander. He has the darker shade of blue on the helmet and the uniform. The helmet is in that darker blue and he has a silver faceplate. He has a silver stripe over the top of the helmet and some black details around the back. He has black snakeskin panels over the shoulders and upper arms. He has that dark blue double-breasted uniform 
uniform jacket that has silver lining and gold buckles. He has the raised red cobra emblem at the center of his chest and a gold chain that hangs in front of that. He also has this extra piece here that is an accessory and you could remove it. It has a black strap that goes across the chest, a gold cobra emblem, and this shoulder pad that has some gold chain mail. Attached to that shoulder piece is his cape, which is black on the outside, red on the inside, and that is a soft plastic cape. It is not a soft goods cape as on the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. That shoulder armor and cape piece has some straps that go across the front of the back and some belts that go around the body, and the sheath for the ceremonial sword is attached to that belt. There's also another separate piece for the lower part of his uniform jacket. That uniform jacket has tuxedo tails. He has some black snakeskin panels with silver lining on the jacket to add some detail and break up the blue, and I think that works really well. His arms have that dark blue uniform color but they also have some black forearm guards with some silver lining and red cobra emblems on the outside of those that looks really good and of course he has some black gloves his right hand has a standard gripping hand so he can hold his gun his left hand has a claw hand you can remove those hands and put on the alternate hands let's do that now for the right hand the alternate hand is pointing so he can direct the troops or he can be like with this helmet on I can't pick my nose for the left hand he has a fist for punching and this does give you some alternate poses for Cobra Commander what it does not do is give you a standard gripping hand for the left hand so he cannot hold the pistol and the sword at the same time the legs are in that same dark blue uniform color and he he has red textured stripes down both legs and about those stripes the pin for the knee is not in that red color so it stands out a bit he has tall black boots that go all the way up to his knees and I think these look great as formal uniform boots he has some foot armor over his feet and the toes of his boots are pointed and angled up like cowboy boots now let's look at regal Cobra commander this one has a light lighter blue like version 1 Cobra Commander, but it has gold highlights like version 2, so it's kind of a mix. This figure has the same articulation as the other figure, so I don't think we need to go into all that again, but there are some differences in the accessories, mainly the color. He has that same fish-looking gun with all the snake details. The only difference is this one is in gold instead of silver. The snake head sword fits in the sheath just as the other one, and it is removable you can take that out and it has the same gold snake head handle and it has a bit of gold on the blade but it also has red paint on the blade it is basically the same sword it's just recolored to fit with the new color scheme for this version of Cobra Commander looking at the color for Regal Cobra Commander he has that light blue helmet with the silver faceplate the helmet has a dark blue stripe over the top and some dark blue details on the sides and the back he has gold trim around the bottom of the helmet instead of silver. Basically everything that was silver on the old figure is gold on this one. The uniform jacket has dark blue snakeskin panels lined with gold on the shoulders and upper arms and he has the lighter blue uniform jacket and the contrast between the lighter blue and the darker blue is about the same as on the other figure. That's dark blue to black, this is light blue to dark blue and I think that works. That strap and shoulder piece over the left shoulder are gold with a little touches of red and blue and of course his cape is attached dark blue on the outside red on the inside the gold belts wrap around the body and the sheath is attached in two shades of blue he has that lower piece for the lower part of his uniform jacket that has some panels with a dark blue and some gold trim he has that red cobra emblem at the center of his chest and with this lighter blue I think that red pops a little better he has that gold chain again and the gold buttons his 
arms feature the light blue uniform color with dark blue snakeskin panels lined with gold. He has forearm armor in dark blue lined with gold with red cobra emblems on the outside of his wrists. And I think this just looks great. I just think that's a nice design. He has dark blue gloves. As with the other figure, the left hand is a claw hand. The right hand is a gripping hand. And you can remove those hands and put on the alternate hand. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the pointing finger for the right hand. We have the closed fist for the left hand. So again, some alternate poses. I really just want one of these left hands to be a gripping hand so he can hold both of his weapons at the same time. The lower half of the figure is mostly in that light blue uniform color with textured blue stripes on the outside of the legs, not red this time. In this case, I think red may have worked better in this. I think that would have really looked nice. We have the tall boots that go all the way up to his knees. This time they're in dark blue. And we have the foot armor that that is painted gold this time, and that makes it look even more like cowboy boots. Here are our three Cobra Commanders side by side, and yes, we've had three recolors of the same Cobra Commander mold. Some fans have commented on this. We are seeing a lot of reuse of this Cobra Commander mold, especially for this early in the classified series. They have not issued a hooded Cobra Commander, and maybe they're not going to do a hooded Cobra Commander. That would be a little disappointing. Which of these three Cobra Commanders is my favorite? Well, the Snake Supreme Cobra Commander is a deluxe figure, so it may not be fair to compare with the other two, but even considering that, the standard release Cobra Commander is my favorite. I like the dark blue and the silver and the red. I just think that looks great. That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Commander. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for returning for Class of Friday and sticking around for Cobra Convergence 6. I hope you're enjoying your Cobra contributors this year. Check the website site hcc788.com for a full calendar of presenters in July 2022. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and share this video with your friends. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website hcc788.com. If you like the channel and you'd like to support it, Patreon is a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. I'll be back soon for more classified and vintage Cobra reviews. Until then, remember, only Cobra is Cobra.